everyone in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint this dog mouth in acrylics now for those of us that take pet portrait commissions this can be one of the more tricky elements to get right because the areas here are wet they're going to be very reflective so it's all in the contrast we want to get the highlights on the gum area the tongue and the teeth as bright as they need to be and then the shadows next to it as dark as they need to be that really is what's going to make this that much more realistic so this is available as a nearly two hour real time tutorial available on my Patreon channel. And what I've done here to start with is I've blocked down just a basic grey base layer, just thinned down with water. And then I'm actually using the line art that is provided with each of the Patreon tutorials. I'm making sure there that the transfer paper that I have used is the chalky side down in touch with the canvas board there. So that when you go over the top with either a pencil or an embossing tool, that transfer line will be put onto your canvas. Now this is my preference regardless if I'm freehanding or using the line art provided there because canvases I find don't erase very well. So when I am freehanding something, I will always do that on a separate piece of normal printer paper and then use my transfer paper to get that onto my canvas. That will mean that you're keeping everything nice and clean and tidy. And as we know, the canvases are quite expensive so when we are working on pre-stretched canvases we obviously don't want to be risking damaging that surface by erasing any pencil marks from our freehand sketch so the transfer paper can really help to avoid that process so what i do to start with like with everything is i break it down into small sections so this is regardless of the medium that i'm working in and i'm just going with more of a solid base layer for the tongue area now on my youtube tutorials and on patreon obviously there i do focus about how i spend a lot of time getting the base layer as accurate as i can now here you can see i haven't necessarily gone down with a solid pink i have already indicated where those shadows are at the back of the tongue and at the end of the tongue as well but for this tongue area in comparison to other tutorials this is more of a basic layer now that's because that the lighting on the tongue was pretty similar there wasn't too many harsh contrasts here so i didn't need my base layer to be too varied the gum area is going to be slightly different though as you can see here i'm already starting to map in the folds within the gum area and the lip just to make sure that i'm getting as close to that reference photo at the beginning stage as i possibly can now the reason that i like to tackle it this way is when i look back at my reference photo and then again at my painting if I'm already paying attention as closely as I can to that reference photo, it's going to be a lot easier to follow. So for instance here, by indicating at where the folds in the gum and the lip area is, I can quickly use my reference points that I speak a lot about in my Patreon tutorials so that I don't lose where I am on that reference photo. Now for me that's quite a big deal because I then don't spend too much time staring at my reference photo trying to work out where I am and that can make that painting process that much longer. So by using reference points and breaking it down into small areas and getting my base layer fairly accurate from the beginning, I find that I work far more effectively and I get the paintings done that much quicker. So I'm doing a fair bit of wet on wet blending here. Now my hands are moving around where I'm explaining what I'm doing, the processes here that are taking place, because as I say, all this is available as a real time tutorial on Patreon. And while one area of the gum was drying, I then started just to block in where the teeth are. Now, one element of the real time tutorial that I really do focus on is the sort of getting the anatomy of the mouth right. Now, we need to make sure that we get the highlights and the shadows and where the teeth are positioned in the right place. They must be accurate to that reference photo. Something that can happen is the teeth can be positioned slightly more on the horizontal line so you make them too straight within the mouth and that will affect the, the general shape and then the finished outcome of what that dog's going to look like which is obviously not what we want we want to get as close to that reference photo as we possibly can so we need to make sure that the teeth are positioned in line with the jaw all of these placements of the highlights the shadows and the teeth themselves are going to make such a difference to the end painting so I do make sure that I get them, as I say, as close to that reference photo as I possibly can. Now, that being said, you may have some dogs where it's unique to that animal, where one of the teeth might be slightly wonky. Maybe they have a bit more of, a, of an overbite, maybe. 
that's something that's going to be quite unique to that animal but for a general rule they are going to follow the line of the jaw so it's really important to get that in place and what I'm working on now is more of a refinement layer so once I've got my very first base layer down I then start by adding my additional layers building up my highlights then adding in my mid-tone shadows just making the general shape of the tongue more realistic with each additional layer that I add. I'm going to be applying glazes later on in the painting process so I'm really not focusing on the exact colour of the tongue at the moment. I am just wanting to make sure that I'm getting the lights and the darks in place. And that's one of the main advantages with working with acrylics. You really don't have to focus on the exact colour that you're mixing at the beginning stages. All of that can be completely changed at the end. You could do your base layer entirely in black and white or sepia tones and then add the colour part separately at the end just with glazes. The colours of the tongue are going to vary depending on many factors. So it's going to vary depending on the dog itself. Some dogs have black spots on their tongue and also it's going to depend on the light source, the time of day that the photograph was taken on. Some tongues are going to contain far more purple tones and others are going to be a lot more redder in colour. So that will vary. If colour selection is something that you do find a bit challenging because it can be something that slows the process down however the one thing that I will always say is the exact colour is not as important as your contrasts. The reason being let's say this photograph that I was working from was taken 10 seconds later when the clouds went over the sun. It was not going to appear as bright or as warm in colour as what you can see in although this is the finished painting in the corner as the reference photo would be. It therefore might contain more purples and more of the bluer end of the colour wheel. So that's something to really pay attention to. I could paint this tongue with more of the purple colours and it would still look realistic. I'm adding my highlights in the gum area. I'm making sure that all of those are in the right place. I'm making sure that my contrasts are sharp, but the colour might not be as accurate to the photo. But that's because I don't necessarily need it to be. I just want to get a, as close as I possibly can but making sure that I've got my highlights and my shadows there. Now one tool that can really help is an eyedropper tool. You can get these uh, available on free apps and what it allows you to do is select and click a part of that reference photo. It will bring up in a larger section that specific colour and you can then able to sort of see and pinpoint that colour a lot easier. That's something that can really narrow down the process in terms of what colours you need to mix on your palette. You can then see whether or not it's got more of those purple colours, more of the redder tones and it really can help to sort of break down that tricky element within the portrait. Now as I say you could feel like you have painted that slightly the wrong colour, don't feel like you have to completely paint that layer again. You can just add as I've said a simple glaze at the end and within a few seconds that colour will be where you want it to be. You really don't have to completely cover over a layer in order to adjust that colour, unlike other mediums that we might be working in. Acrylics is very forgiving for that, so the exact colour at this stage really isn't important. Now one consideration in terms of adding in the detail, if you're working on a smaller scale, you're not going to be able to have the same room to add the same level of detail like what I'm working on here. Now this isn't on a large scale either, so this was a 4x4. Four that's really not that big. It's roughly about the size of which a 8x12 full pet portrait would be and that's why I chose to do this study that size. 8x12s are a really common size for a single pet portrait so if you had something like that to work from this mouth area here would be about that size. So you can see that I'm able to still get a nice amount of detail for something on this scale. If I work larger I'm going to be able to add more of those highlights, more of those details on the tongue and the gum but I really didn't feel like I had to work larger for this. Because the highlights and the shadows had such a sharp contrast you're able to get that high level of realism even when working on a smaller scale. Now one of the most common complaints that acrylics get is that they're difficult to blend because of how quickly they dry. Now for me in some cases I actually use my hairdryer to speed up the drying process because there are other ways that you can keep that paint from getting too dry. You can really slow down that drying process. Now I uploaded a video, uh, it was probably a couple of weeks ago now, and that was on how I blend acrylics. So if that's of interest, I will put a little card in the corner there.
but you can use a fine mist sprayer bottle and apply a light layer of water over the top and that will stop that layer from drying. You're then going to be able to add your additional layer on top and then do wet on wet blending if you're needing to get that nice soft transition. So at the moment what I decided to do here is I did a dog nose study on Patreon as well and that had a grey background so I just wanted to have something slightly different here so I decided to go with that warmer green colour. At the moment you can see an awful lot of my brush strokes still showing through. That's because the green that I used is more transparent so what I need to do is allow that layer to completely dry and then go over the top with another layer of the green just to make that more opaque which is exactly what I'm doing here. I've got a little bit more of my titanium white to the mixture. The titanium white in the Liquitex Basics, which is my paint of choice that I like to use, is far more opaque. So that means that it's a lot harder to see through it, which is why you're not able to see as much of that grey base layer showing through. Normally I would add the background in first, but I didn't realise when I first started this that I was going to want to make this background green. The one thing that I would say though is whenever you are doing any painting, I like to do the background first. The reason being is the fur on the dog or whatever it is that you might be painting needs to overlap that background so that it doesn't look like a sticker that's just stuck on that canvas. When that fur overlaps the background, you're making that subject look closer to the viewer and everything then starts to look far more realistic. You want that fur to overlap that background. If you add your background in after you've done your subject and you're having to paint around all of the fur, it's just making that process far longer than it needs to be. So my preference is to certainly do the background first. So this tutorial on Patreon isn't as much about the black fur area here that I'm working on at the moment because I already have an over two hour real time tutorial available over there focusing on short black fur. But I did want to incorporate this in this study. The reason being, one of the things that can happen is when you're working on an individual element of any painting, it might appear like something's not right. Something's been sort of throwing you off. Now, one thing that can happen, if you still think that your line art was accurate, your initial sketch was accurate, it can just be that you don't have the areas around that one element in place. By mapping in those areas around that one element, it will help to bring the whole thing together and you're gonna be able to better judge what you need to tweak when looking back at your reference photo. Now these details that I'm working on here make such a difference. They really do tie the whole thing together. These are the details where, as I've mentioned, that overlap that background. It's now automatically pushed that green color all the way to the back. And that is exactly the illusion that I want to create. So these very fine details and the whiskers that I'm starting to add in here need to be left until the very end, especially when you know that your background is finished. If you do think there's any chance that your background needs to be tweaked for whatever reason, don't add these final details in. So for these details with this fur type that overlap the background, I like to use a liner brush like what I've got here. Now in order to get the paint to flow off this brush, you do need to make sure that the mixture of paint versus water is at the right consistency. If you're finding that the paint is not flowing off that brush as easy as it should, it's a good indication that you need to add a little bit more water to your mixture. If it is the opposite and your lines look far more translucent than you want, or maybe even the paint is running down that canvas, that's an indication that you've got too much water. Add a little bit more paint to that mixture to thicken it up. So here is the finished study here. Now you can really see how important the bright white highlights and the dark shadows are, especially on the gum area. Having that strong contrast between the two has made this area look wet and far more realistic. So I hope the tips and techniques in this tutorial have been useful. If they were, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. And if you want to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. Also, if the slower tutorials on Patreon in pastels and acrylics are of interest, I'll link my Patreon channel in the description below. I do have a Patreon library on my website, which I'll also link in the description below. And that's got all of the tutorials available there so that you can see the kind of content I've got before you sign up. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to pop them in the comments below and I'll be uploading another video very soon.